So in part two, I'm going to look at the semi-finals and the final match. The semi-finals and the finals were, I think they were all great matches. And I think that they were overlooked. Um, Gerard Gordo for Kevin Rosier in the semi-finals. And this was spectacular. And I keep saying that because... Well, this was a spectacle. That's what it was designed to be. So, in, in this fight, it was great. It was very technical striking versus just a big guy. Honestly, like, he, yeah, he could kickbox, but, like, the technical striker was definitely Gerard Gordo, and he definitely showcased how much more technical he was in this fight. Um... The crisp combinations, he placed his shots very well. Um, flawless performance, really. And he wasted no energy in the first round, and he wasted very little in the second round. So, um, in the first two fights, he was very fresh. Um, and during the this fight, you could definitely tell he was the pressure of the fight. Kevin took a lot of damage. He was a bit messed up from that first fight, understandably so. He was probably still a bit tired. He's a big guy, and this is at altitude. Um, and he got dropped uh, pretty early on because these were all short fights. They're all early, but um, he Gerard kept baiting him to get up. He would back up. Try and bait Kevin to stand back up because he would have to drop his hands. And when he would do that, when he would want to stand back up, Gerard would um he would come back in with that right elbow because he broke his right hand in the first fight. And this was just a brilliant move. Um, not wanting to damage that hand further, uh, the elbows harder. He could still get a lot of torque and power into that right elbow. So it was a brilliant move overall, and very smart. Eventually, um, Kevin just decided to stay down there, and that's when Gerard stomped him in the ribs. The fight was over. It was completely one-sided. Very short fight. Gerard did amazing in both fights that he was that he participated in. Um, and I did like the more technical fight. I won this round. Um, and next match in the semifinals was the one that everyone was anticipating. From the first round, Hoist Gracie was so dominant. And everyone, as soon as they saw that first round with Hoist Gracie, everyone took notice. And Ken Shamrock was already a huge name. He just loved to fight. And he could also grapple. He was the only other guy that really was a decent grappler. And so everyone was really anticipating this fight after the first round. Um, and it did not go the way a lot of people expected. They thought their grappling was even. They even stated that during the commentary, and that, that was a bad move. You saw them in what one fight during this event. You can't say that just because they're both good grapplers that they're even. You don't know that. And obviously it wasn't because Ken Shamrock, despite being much bigger, much stronger, he got out grappled. And he didn't know what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was. He even stated that. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. I, I believe him. Um, and he he started to take down. Hoist, hoist stomped right out. Like, right for the bell, he stomped right at him. And went for a takedown, and Ken Shamrock stuffed it very nicely. Beautiful sprawl. Um, but his mistake was he wanted to go for a leg, and he didn't exactly have it. He gets all like Hoist, who's a very good jiu-jitsu practitioner. He should have made sure he secured it. I think this is where he screwed up because when he went for the heel hook against Patrick Smith, he made sure it was secure before he went for it. Whereas this one, he just dove on a leg. And that was bad. And you could tell it was bad because he ended up losing the fight. Um, so Hoist used that opportunity to get on top and tried to really mount him, but... Ken Shamrock, very strong guy, very good grappler, uh, tried to get back to his feet. He was able to turn, 
Although in turning, he was trying to wrap around Hoist's left leg, which Hoist let him do because Hoist was grabbing his neck. He was probably hoping for like be able to take Kent's back for a re-naked, but at this point he probably knew that he didn't need to secure his back, so that Kent Shamrock was basically securing his Hoist's position for him. Um, and he just squeezed. Um, Ken Shamrock wanted to get that leg, but Hoist had his neck. And Ken Shamrock was tapped five times. They thought the well, ref didn't see it, the ref didn't know. You obviously won, they didn't really know the rules. Um, and usually a lot of fighters, this has happened before, where would say, no, I didn't tap. Hoist was arguing that he did. And Ken Shamrock, Ken Shamrock was a man about it and said, yeah, that's it, I, I tapped, and admitted that he lost. So, props to Ken Shamrock, despite losing, he was a gentleman about it, um, and even in the interview, um, they asked, do you think you're the second best fighter here? He's like, no, I'm the third best, acknowledging that Gerard Gordo made it to the finals, and so, because he made it to the finals, he was a better fighter. I don't agree that Gordo was a better fighter. But that was all class. I think it was just the layout of the tournament that, that made it happen. I don't think it was the better fight, though I do really like Gerard Gordo. Um, and so the finals are set up. Gerard Gordo, this really good technical striker versus Hoist Gracie, a very technical Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. And neither of them had taken a lot of damage. No one was really taking damage at there of the finalists. So you could definitely tell... These guys were pretty much at their best when it came to this fight, except for Gordo's broken right hand. But Gordo was maybe like 40 pounds heavier. He was a big guy. Like, he wasn't big, big, but he was pretty big. Like, 210, 220 pounds, over six foot. Whereas Hoyes was like 170, 180. Um, so he was definitely outsized. But... That didn't stop him any. Hoist put on a show and really showcased Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, really promoted his family name, um, submitted Gerard Gordo pretty quickly, did a great job, got that re naked, and it was over. From then, Hoist was a legend. He was the guy. He was the smallest guy there and just destroyed everyone. He was never even threatened. Um, and you had names like Gerard Gordo, who's a very good striker. You had Ken Shamrock, who's a very famous fighter. Uh, big shoot fight, um, big name in shoot fighting. Um, not exactly a striker, but he can strike. Big, thick guy, very good grappler, decent wrestling. He was probably the favorite to win. And Hoist just ran through him. So, it really cemented his legacy. And he really cemented his family's legacy during this fight. Um, it did everything it needed to. And from then on, they set the bar pretty high in terms of what you could expect from future UFC events. Because I believe this was supposed to be a one-off, but it was such a, such a success that they had to do another one. And honestly, thank God they did. Because of that, now we have the rest of the UFC that we have today. Um, so, just a great event even though it was a bit of a mess. Uh, and in the next part, I'll be looking at the event as a whole and what it meant to the rest of the UFC. See you then.